welcome along to the Invincible Podcast with my man Lee Judges in the building. Um, brought to you today, of course, by AFTV Pick 10. And we've got news about that Pick 10 coming up a little bit later on. I mean, uh, oh yes. it's hotting up, man. Who's going to have to buy who a meal? Yeah. I'll tell you what, just, there's so many teams that let me down last week on that Pick 10, including Arsenal. For the first time, last weekend, they let me down, but... But, but by the yeah, way, but, but he's saying that he's saying that they let me down as well, so it wouldn't have affected the results. Yeah, I guess oh, so. I guess yeah. so. We're going to be talking on today's show about Granite Xhaka. What has happened to Granite Xhaka? That is a question that I'm going to be posing today, because I mean, this is a good thing. This has been a complete Incredible. turnaround in this guy and we got to discuss this yeah. because we were discussing it when he was poor. So we've got to discuss it today. But before we get to that, Lee, have you got over <laughs> have you got over last weekend yet there, the referee? No, what? I haven't. I haven't like that. I mean, I, I'll tell you what, it's been winding me up. And then, and of course, old Dermot, he comes out with it, didn't he? You Dermot. know, the next oh, day. Oh, the referee. Oh, oh, Did you I can't see that? call him his second name. Dermot Pratt is his name, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> A tangle of legs now, like you know what I mean. Tangle of legs. The, the thing is about it, right? When I when I when I saw that that he said a tangle of legs, I'm like, what tangle of legs? This guy's got his arm round him. It's just a joke. It's an absolute Honestly, joke. Honestly, you know what I mean. This is when you see stuff like that and you realise that it's basically it's a referee's union, isn't it? I mean, which referee? Even though he doesn't referee anymore, but he's still. I've heard him say before, he's still friendly with all the refs. He still does some little bits and bobs on them, right? Which referee is going to come out and speak out against another referee? That's like somebody saying to me, Robbie, come and speak out against Lee Judges. I'm not yeah. going to do it, am I? No. I'm gonna, or, or if I do do it, I'm going to try and do it in a way in which it doesn't belittle you, it doesn't yeah, make you exactly. look bad. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So what's the point in even asking him for? You know what I mean? Uh, that is it. It's exactly that. You know what I mean? What is the point? It's like, you ain't going to slate your mate, are you? Like, do you know what I mean? Exactly that. So you're not going to do it. So why do it? And, so and, why and, do that, it? and that actually is one of the problems with VAR, right? Because the, it's a referee in the um, VAR yeah. who knows the referee on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. All these referees, I remember one time I went up to St. George's Park, yeah? Um, which if, if people don't know, that's where it's the home of the England setup, yeah. the FA setup, right? So that's where England go to train and they do loads of training courses there for um, coaching. And you know, I think a lot of people go there and do their coaching badges and all stuff like that. But also one of the things that they do at St. George's Parks is they have the referees there. They get together, they do training together. They, you know what I mean? And I was up there one time, right? And all the refs were there. I don't know if they had some sort of seminar or something, but all the referees are there. So they all know each other. Yeah. They're all mates, which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. But is it then right to have a referee in the VAR who's friendly with the referee on the pitch? Because it's, I, it's got to be all scrapped. When I done all this seminar, did they have an eye test there? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like that. Hey? that should be part of them, of, of, the, of their uh, regime. You know what I mean? But no, it's like, it's got to be now. I, I think now it's got to be scrapped and started again. I, I, Scrap VAR? No, you can't, like, listen, it's Pandora's box, it's out, it's out. You've got, you've got to have it now, but it's got to be re totally revamped. And I mean this sincerely now, like, because what it needs to be done is if it's clear and obvious mistake, clear and obvious. Now, I've seen a couple of incidents this week that, are, you know what I mean, if I had air, I wouldn't have air, be, I'd be pulling it out, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, you see that Bournemouth game on the Monday. The Bournemouth game, you're saying, what is handball and what's not handball no more? Like, you know, when I played football, you knew what handball was and what. You know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, uh, like some again, so next week, that'll happen exactly like that again next week and it won't be given. You know, yeah. you can go back to the Gabriel one, like, you know, uh, uh, against Liverpool. Everybody's going, it's handball. No, it's not. It's come off his chest and in it, his hand, like, you know what I mean? But even so, is that really handball? You know what I, mean? I, I, I don't know what is handball. I don't know what is handball. I don't know what is handball. I don't know what is a foul because if you if you go back to the Southampton game, um, that player, he's got both arms yeah. around um, Jesus, running in the box, not once, but twice. 
Jesus goes over, right? It's not given, but yet still the day before that, we see an almost identical case of that where Scott McTominay's got his arms around um, Brozier in the Chelsea game and that is given. And to me, the Jesus one was more of a penalty than that. And they were both penalties, by the way. Yeah, they were both penalties. We've seen players in the box make the slightest of contact on another player and the referee says, contact, it's, it's... So why, even if it was a tangle of legs, right... It's contact, isn't it? Well, exactly. I I, I, honestly, I just don't... I... He said last week, he said last week on the Harry Kane penalty, whether you think it's a penalty or not, you know what I mean? You know, he said last week, oh, he, he brushed his head and that's why it's a penalty. Oh, that one where Harry Kane scored against... Against, um, against Everton. Everton, yeah. yeah. He said, it, like Pickford, it brushed his head. So it was contact penalty. Now he's saying it's a tangle of legs. And he, you know, he got the ball. He said uh, afterwards. He you know, the ball? he's got his arms oh, around. Got, of course, the back he's going to get the ball. Even, even if you come in from around the back, you've got your arms around the player. Listen to me. That was an easy one to do, right? I'm, because you've got a player running through on goal. You've got another player. It's clear to see from the pictures or what watch the video back. He's got both arms around the player for the reason of stopping him. From getting a shot off from the reason of trying to put him off scoring a goal because yeah. the guy in Jesus has got ahead of him and he's about to get a shot off and he panics the defender and he puts his arms round him not one arm both arms it's as clear a penalty as you're gonna see and to make excuses for it why, why don't you just say to, if you even if he would have said something like you know what I feel a bit sorry for him because maybe his position weren't right or... But don't come and tell me that legs are tangled up on it. It's an insult. It, it, well, it's an it, insult. Which, it winds you up even more because you know and it's it, a penalty. And it, it puts the referees in even worse a light because you just think, these guys ain't got a clue. And, and what, what it might... I can slightly forgive the referee if he's not sure, but then then, then you go to VAR yeah. and you see it. Now, that's fair and like, he doesn't see it. I'm then watching the Man City game the, the, and the game's going on and VAR have got involved. So I'll go back to a penalty which Bernard, Sil Bernard Silva mm. has created, which is never a penalty, and VAR have got involved and said, oh, you better go and have a look at that. Like, embarrassing. And it's not just... It, look, listen, this is not just me as an Arsenal fan. I sat there watching Tottenham. Now, I wanted uh, that goal to be disallowed. Oh, you know the one I mean? against... For Harry Kane, for, for his goal against Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah. Of course I want it for that. But for footballing reasons and a lover of football, they're taking two minutes to see if it's touched... Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, that, that was the one where... They were trying to see if it had brushed the Brad, Tottenham defender. So what if it is? It's still a goal. It's not. It's 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 not off. No, but the, the figures about it, right, is that it was obvious after they'd watched it back a couple of times that you couldn't conclusively say. So that's the end of it. So you've got to give the advantage. You've got to give the goal. Two and a half you, minutes. You, Two yeah. and a half minutes. I, 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 I am. I am a fan of VAR. I think VAR is needed in modern day modern day football. I think with all the cameras and everything that are at games, we do need. VAR, I think it works in the majority of the cases. The thing that lets down VAR is the referees that run it. Yeah, yeah and that's the where referees to behind the VAR are the ones that are letting it down. It's the, I think we do need. I mean, I know that when we used to watch football, there was no VAR, and there was a lot of horrendous decisions. Yeah. Right, this one should clear those up, and it's not. And some of these ones, not the the thing that annoys me is that they're actually making things worse, worse. with it. Yeah, exactly right? that. When it's something that should improve the game, you know? Um, so it's not being used properly. Like, no. You know what I mean? Like, no. you know, and, and, you know, there's a couple of things that have got to change as well. It's like, for instance, let's just talk about the Tottenham one with Lloris, you know, and, and the... Um, yeah, I think it's got him wound up. Around yeah, it's got me wound up because there's so many incidents, right? You know, he crashes into Wilson, right? Why are VAR getting involved in that? Because that's not fact. That is an opinion. Now, you're going to get me and you sitting here, you could go, yeah, it's a foul. And I'm, I might think it's not. That, that is not fact. So mm. how the VAR get involved and go, yeah, that is ridiculous. Because at the end of the day, you can't have VAR for a decision like that. And also, I've got to say, offside rule right now, when they're getting rulers out and all that like, you know. Is, is the that, line. Is the line and all that like. So basically, we have a conversation with my mate about this. He says, if I'm a striker, yeah. right, and I, 
I, I've got size nines, right? Size nine feet, right? And he's size 10, right? He's offside. <laughs> Right, and I've got, because I've got size nine. So now when they're looking for a striker on a scouting thing, like, you know what I mean? They're looking at me, yeah, yeah pace six and a half, seven, eight, nine, yeah, goal scoring ratio. Size eight feet, yeah, sign him, because he's not going to get offside. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that, that, that's what's going on there, like, you know what I mean? It's just a ridiculous decision. <laughs> like, you know, so sm if you're a small, small feet striker, you're going to get like a million pound contract. Just because, you, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's right though. I'm, I know it's ridiculous, but it's, it's right. Oh my you know God. what I mean? You, you kill me, man. So, you, like, you know, I just, I just don't like it. I don't like, you know, the fact that you, you stop. Listen, this, this gets something, look, I'm going back to the Arsenal game now. This, this gets something really right about this, right? Ball goes out of play, Oulagard scores, right? The, the linesman spots that. Didn't need VA for, VAR for that. Fantastic. Give him credit for it. But where VAR is good now, it, right, it, it clarifies it. If, say, he hadn't have given it, it would have said, no, you should have given that. The ball had gone out. Yeah, exactly. Why? Because it's facts. It's factual. Yeah. And, and that's why it works. You know, the, the linesman's done very, very well. VAR back it up. Me and you... Can't argue about that. For, for, where can we argue about it? Mm. You, you, we actually went, oh, yeah. <laughs> time would still say yeah, Well, no, but yeah, time probably would. You know what I mean? But oh, I mean, we, we was in the, we was watching it. We went, yeah, yeah, it's offside. It's, it's gone over. Yeah. That's the end of it. There weren't that controversy, was there? Because we knew it was fact and it was right. You know what I mean? Like, so we just moved on from it. But we knew when that penalty was done, we knew that that was wrong. You know what I mean? And it ain't just Arsenal. I've seen like Callum Wilson get done for a penalty mm. at Old Trafford the other week. Like never, a, you know, VAR didn't even get involved. You know what I mean? There, there's so many decisions that are going wrong. The handball yesterday, like, you know what I mean? Like it's ridiculous, you know? So, and, it, and I'm going to say as a footballing fan, Robbie, it is ruining it for me. It is ruining it. It's ruining the pleasure of it. You know, you can't, celebrate goals like you used to you really you can't because you're you mean mm. you know you, you, you're always checking it's in it's just because you're gonna mug yourself up like you, know <laughs> yeah. I mean? like, you, you know. jump up you jump up at a game and then you're like you're looking at first thing you do actually is you look at the ref yeah yeah, yeah i'm looking and if at you see him like this yeah, with yeah. his feet to his ear you're like uh -oh. oh dear i i i'm not sure now when i go to games i don't know if you're like this uh, I'm not sure until the ball kicks off. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm until not... that ball kicks off, right? And then you're like, that's when I'm sure, yes, it's a goal. I'm, then I go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, and up until then, I'm not I don't care how many either. celebrations are going on with the players and stuff like that. Until I see that ball kick off in the centre circle, do you it know, ain't a goal. Do you know when, um, now this, is a real, this is a real thing, like, and I don't know if he was the same. When Jesus scored against Tottenham, I didn't celebrate that at that moment in time because I thought oh is there a foul there is a thing there like I didn't I, w I, won't, I was a bit worried about it like do you know what I mean and then like that was all oh yeah I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> celebrating it like you know what I mean but when Xhaka scored mm. look how mad that was because everybody knew it was a goal yeah because he hit it from miles Cause, out cause you, yeah do you see what I'm saying so there but wasn't I still I, wasn't I went worry. mad I went mad yeah and I was it was limbs yeah but I still not sure until I see that ball go into yeah. the centre circle and they pass that back. That's when I'm like, yes, yeah, yeah. it's a goal. You know what I mean? I honestly, until I see that now and again, it's not that I don't celebrate. I'll still be celebrating, but not. But until not I like see that, that yeah. until I see that, man, I'm telling you. Oh, well, you know what? Let me get off of referees, man. We, we, we spent a lot of time. I was only just asking you in general. You went mad on it. Yeah, I, 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 I just, <laughs> look, I'm, a, I'm a football fan as well as a as an Arsenal fan, and it's it's ruining my game of football. It's ruining it for the for the spectator going to the game, and I I do think it's ruining yeah. it all round. By I the do. way, pick ten is really starting to ruin it for me and all right. So AFTV pick ten, right? <laughs> it started to. Nah, it's not ruining my weekends. I love it. But because I'm in competition, yeah, because I'm in competition with him, now I've got something else to worry about yeah. in the weekend. I thought all I had to worry about was the Arsenal result, right? But now I've got him to worry about with like certain oh, other I'm results. Right away, I'm on it. I'm on it. Oh, man. So last week, how it turned out, right, is that both me and him got the same amount. Four, we both four. got only four right, right? So that means that you've won two, I've won one. And there's one that's a draw. That means I have to win this weekend. Yeah. If I don't win this weekend, 
um, I've got to buy you a meal. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to just choose all the same but, as you. <laughs> but if I win this weekend, it'll be a tie, right? Yeah. It'll be a tie, which means we're going to have a, then a tiebreaker because there's a Sunday special this week. We, by the way, you can win £5,000 in that, right? That's for the Nottingham Forest game. We will then do, refer to that game and whoever yeah. wins that will be the person who's, has to, who, who gets that meal. Don't forget, by the way, you know, with the pick 10, there's 20,000 pounds to give away this weekend, right? 10,000 pounds in the Saturday pick 10, 5,000 pounds in Sunday's pick 10, and another 5,000 pounds in the Arsenal versus Nottingham Forest special, right? So make sure you check it out. And also there's our iPhone 14 to give away, which has been rolled over from last week, right? All you gotta do to win the iPhone is just enter the competition. And you can do that by clicking the link in the description or downloading um, the app um, AFTV Plus and you can get involved in it right now. But that's all you've got to do to enter. But it is a lot of fun. It's a brilliant guy. I've got to or, say. It's I a, don't know. It's, it, it's the, a frustrating the fun's game. Because when you're up against somebody like him and he reminds you of everything. Although he's been quiet over the past couple of weeks. Oh, I've, I've, I've let myself down the last <laughs> couple. Like, I had, a, I had a, you know, a, a, a strong one like, a couple of weeks ago. But... Four is pretty poor, like really, like yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, you know, one minute, as I say, you got eight the other week, which is fantastic. I was on nine, one one week, like, and then went down, whittled it down to seven, like you know what I mean. Then six, and then like, and then you look at the the winners, and they're picking ten out of that, like you know what I mean. I don't know how they do it. Ah, they're doing it. I don't, I don't know. know. I do think it. the winner got a nine this week, which is incredible. Jeez. And there were some res funny results this week. Yeah. There was some funny results. So. I, I, I was looking at the um, the Nottingham Forest game for the pick 10. That's the £5,000 one, right? I've gone for full-time result Arsenal to win it. Arsenal to be winning at half-time. Um, I think Arsenal will win that 3-0. That's what I'm going for. Oh, all right, yeah. Um, Gabriel Jesus to score at any time. What did you put? Yes. So did I. I think, I think he's, he's, he's going to bag a couple... Um, on the Sunday pick 10, actually. All right, let me see what you went for, right? Um, Arsenal, Nottingham Forest. <coughs> Arsenal. Stupid question. Union Berlin versus Munchen Gladbach. Well, I didn't really know about this, but so I've gone for you. I see, I know, my, I know my Bundesliga. Oh, so I've gone for Berlin at home. Yeah, that's how did I. Um, Real Madrid, Girona, that's obvious. Uh, why win? Was it all? Man United versus West Ham. Man United. Now I thought I just thought I'm gonna get be smart here and go for a draw. Oh, so that means e someone's e gonna <laughs> win this. Whatever happens e now. E even though I'm thinking to myself they won't, but I don't know. I just got a funny feeling. Well, listen, about the I'm, game. I'm hoping that you get that one right, so I might be like, you know, because I don't want Man United. Well, what did you go for? Atletico Bilbao versus Villarreal. Atletico Bilbao. Yeah, so did I. Because it's going to end on this Unai man. Emery's left, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to go on this Man United. All right, well, it's going to be tight this week. It's going to be tight. But listen, you guys can get involved, as I said. A £20,000 pot this week. £10,000 for Saturday. £5,000 for Sunday's Big Ten. And also that um, Arsenal versus Nottingham Forest special um, with a prize pot of £5,000. Get involved in that right now. Um, and as I said, the, the link's in the description or download AFTV Plus. Lee, Granite Xhaka. We've got to talk about this yeah, guy. Yeah, we've got to talk about we've this. We've got to now. talk about Granite Xhaka, right? A couple of seasons ago, guy gets substituted in a game, walks off the pitch, throws down the armband, takes his shirt off, turns around to the fans and tells them to F off. Yeah. Walks off the pitch and there's a whole host of fans. I remember interviewing fans after the game who are basically saying, you know what, you told us that if off, well, you actually, you can do that as well. You go and do one. Everybody wanted him out. Every fan, really, I couldn't really think of a fan at that time that said they wanted him to stay. He did stay. Mm. Mikel Arteta came in and a lot of people was thinking he was going to go because Roma wanted him. Yeah, and yeah, I remember at the time was some was, German club he was linked with before. Yeah, he was he was linked with a move back to um, Borussia Mönchengladbach as yeah. well. Glad but Roma come in, um, Mourinho. They wanted him. I think they were willing to pay about 10, 10, 15 million at the time. I can't tell you how many fans at that time were saying, "Robbie, I'll you know, yeah, sell him. Sell I'll, him I'll, I'll drive him to the airport. We yeah. want him gone, right?" But 
Mikel Arteta turned around and said, no, actually, I want to keep him. I, I think he's got a big role to play at the club. A lot of people were questioning Arteta. What's, what's he, is he not seeing what this guy's been doing over the past five years he's been here? He ain't done nothing. Mikel Arteta now, last season, started, you know, wasn't playing in the position he's placed in this season, but was, you know, relying on him. He had a good season last year. Yeah, very year. good season. Did have a couple year. of moments, but he had a good season in general. And then this season, he has been unreal. He has been unbelievable, Lee. Yeah. What's caused the turnaround? What's caused it from fans saying they want him gone to now fans singing his name? We've got Granit Xhaka. Oh, there you go. Granit it's, Xhaka. It's unbelievable. This turnaround is unreal. Real. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, yeah, What's Gane, caused it? I, I, you know, well, he's been playing well and that, that, that you know, does help. Um, first and foremost, I've got to say it, whatever you think about him, blah, 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 blah he's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. I met nice him one guy. time and I have to say he was a very nice guy. He's a very top, top, top guy. So I think that was mis interpreted a little bit like you know what I mean with all of what's going on because they just look at him as a footballer but that I think he's got a fantastic mental strength as, as well to, to go through that that day that that happened I'm sitting next to his dad was like, he? yeah sitting next to his dad like and his mum wow and that happened and what did you say? I, I, I went oh my god what's he done and, and his dad went oh no like you know what I mean? seriously? seriously this is a true story like, I'm not lying to you when I say this right Within three minutes of him walking down that town, with probably less than that, the phone rang and it was Granite. Like his dad took the call and he said, right, we're coming, all right? And that was the last, that was, uh, I didn't see the dad for, for a little while after that, they, they, he just left. So he, so he must have left that stadium within five, 10 minutes I don't think he even so had he a shower. He stain him as well. Yeah, I don't think so he had a So he did a full on Ronaldo. I, 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 yeah, I don't think he had a shower. I don't think he had anything because they, they, they left. All right. And I actually said to his dad, oh, you know, he shouldn't have done that. And like, you know, and when people go, did we'll you ever see? Do you, do you know, <laughs> Look people, how nice he is, right? Because yeah, the dad was there. I know, yeah. Right. 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 If the dad weren't no, there, well, we, is, he would have been losing it. I know a, you. This I know this guy already, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is the problem because I, you know, like, I, I'm, you know, I, I love the club, you know what I mean? And the passion of it all that, like, you know. So, People have asked me that. Was you, what do you think about? Well, I, I never told him to f off for booing because <laughs> I've got his mum and dad sitting next to me. Like, do you know what I mean? So I'm going. But I was actually saying, get off the pit. What, what are you doing? I actually did say to him, you know, yeah. you shouldn't be doing that. And I think the, the dad agreed, and and uh, that was that. Uh, like Granite has sat, sat in those. If he weren't playing, he'd, he'd come that, and, and that's how I got to, to know him and talk to him. And he's, as I say, he's a really nice guy. But where are these seats? Well, you sat in them the other day. Granite Jack used to sit in those just a yeah, club yeah, seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He used to sit mm. there and his mum and dad there. Like, you know, that's where they sit. And, uh, it, you know, I remember sitting against Burnley going like, you know, funny enough, sitting at Burnley and... Uh, I look, and there's Granite Shacker sitting next to me. I thought, oh, yeah, well, he can't be. He should be playing like, but he was injured. Mm. Like, and I'm looking at him and I think, is it him or is it not? And I said, excuse me. I said, <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone, uh, I said, you've been playing, he said, I've got a slight injury and all that. And, and I was really <coughs> talking, he was talking about, he talks about anything, but referees, he come down and it was a couple of times he was there and we'd get in conversations. He was, a, he, I'm telling you, he's a lovely, lovely guy. Now, when all that was going on, just before that was, that was building, that was building before yeah, that was yeah. going on. Then it was a few little boos and all that. And I think a lot of it was to, to do with the fans weren't happy with him because he was captain and they didn't think that he deserved to be captain. And he was taking a bit of, getting a bit of stick from that. But even though that was brewing, people asked for a photo, people asked for a photo, he autograph, he'd be happy mm. to, even though he knew the fans didn't like him. And I thought, I always said that, I admire him for that. Cause he mm. could have actually just said, hey, I'm sorry, mm. I'm with my family and whatever, but he didn't. So it was brewing. And then that happened. And that for me was the end of it. I, 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 you know, I said, it was really nice meeting you, Mr. 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 <laughs> and Mrs. Sh I ain't seen you no more, like, because he's gone. And I actually didn't think that he would come back, like, you know what mm. I mean? Like, but the turnaround from that day to now is just uh, incredible. If you'd have said that, like, 
in a film or a story, you'd say that now, and it could never, it could never come back from yeah, that. That's like Rocky. You could never come back. Yeah. Like, no, no way, no yeah, way. No, you, you, Too far fetched. You know it more than me with the fans, and, and there's still fans that are very little bit like with it and all that. I but I turned, think most of them now around. have just turned it. I think he's the game for me when it. And I'm, I'm so pleased because I, like, like, you know. If, Hold on, wait a minute. Just going back, I'm just wrote a slight rewind before you get to that point. Yeah. So you said that they went, so they don't sit next to you no more? No. No. And all of a sudden his form's got good. Yeah, might be shouting things like that. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe it was like. It was you. Our partner. It was all your fault. Yeah, our partner in a way was a good thing. Like. Well, well, the reason that, the reason, and this is why I say about uh, Saka, like, you know what I mean? Because once Granite, Granite Saka then signed his contract, right, part of his deal for the contract was that he got a box. Right, so he, he's in a box. And then I've got Mr. and Mrs. Saka and his brother next to me. Wow. Right, so I had a year Who's of them. Right? I don't... But they're not there no more. So they got a contract. They've so got, they... They're in a box. So that's why I always say, I think that Saka has signed that contract, like, you know, because they're not there So now. Who's, who's there now? Well, I've got a little feeling that it's something to do with Ulagar's family because they're like, they, one of, like, his brother or something, it looks a little bit like him. He's got oh, you've got El Nenny's like, brother near you as well, El Nenny's brother's behind me, right? yeah, <coughs> yeah. Who comes up and, and yeah. introduces, like, you know yeah. what I mean, as a nice guy. Yeah, so it's where I am, it's sort of like families and all that line. How do you get that? Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's, it ain't a great thing, is because, you know, one of the greatest, I've, 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 I think I have told this story before, like, you know what I mean? Um, uh, um, I always play that has left for Aston Villa now, like centre half for us. Callum Chambers. Ca Callum Chambers. I used to be sticking up for him, left, right, and centre, right. You know what I mean, right? And I, you know, I don't get the chance and everything like that, like you know. And one day I was sitting there, he'd done something wrong. I went, Chambers, you're absolutely shit. Ringing like that. This woman turned around and said, Do you mind? That's my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> and I've gone, oh, I'm always on his side. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. <laughs> it took me 80 minutes to, 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 get, to get her back on side. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, so, uh, so, yeah, so you've got to be careful. Like, you know, and you're saying, you know, like Eddie's, uh, I know there was a couple of Eddie's family at the back. Yeah. Like, that's why I'm always going, hey, do you, hey, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that's how that's how, yeah. how, how, how it went there. But I'm going back to where I think that it all changed for, for you know obviously the performances. Like, I go back to that Brentford game when we won three 0 and there was a moment there when he just stood there clapping, and the whole that whole end of the uh, way and his singing name. his name. And for me, it was an emotional moment because I felt it was like that. Yeah. But obviously, like he doesn't know me from any. If mm. I see him now, he probably wouldn't even recognise me. Yeah. I'd have to remind him, and he'd probably go, mm. "Oh yeah, yeah, how you doing?" But, yeah, do a Julian. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> do a Julian. Granite, granite! <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't yeah. do it, like, you know. But for me, knowing that he's a nice guy and what he's gone through and how he's turned it around, that was a poignant moment in, the, yeah. in, in his arsenal. I, I've gone from, you know, that day, and I always remember that day as well. And, I, and actually, I had a lot of sympathy for him at first when, because I, if, if you remember rightly, when he was coming off the pitch, his number came up and everybody started, well, not everybody, but a lot of people cheer. started going, hey, get, you know them ironic yeah. cheers where it's yeah, like, yeah. hey, get off. So I could understand his reaction because his reaction was kind of like, this is how I read it. His reaction at first was kind of like, what, well, yeah, me as usual, yeah, yeah. You see, if you notice, yeah, you yeah, watch yeah. it back. He sort of goes like, yeah, yeah, all right, always me, yeah, it's always yeah. me. So I could get that because he's almost sort of saying, right, again, the team's not performing, it's my fault, right? Where I then got upset, so I, I, I agreed with him then, I, I was with him. I was actually with him then, I was like, even though he hadn't played, I don't think he'd played any worse than anybody else in that game. But even though I know he'd been underachieving, I was with him because I was like, it, it, I don't like that. I don't like them ironic cheers and things like that, right? <clears throat> Where I then got upset with him though was how long he took to come off. Yeah, that was the thing. Stuff that like was why that people booed him. Because I was like, yo, Granite, this ain't about you. Yeah, this is get about off. get off the pitch. We're losing the game. Get someone else on so we can try and win it. That's all I was caring about, right? And at that time after that, I felt like that was, yeah, it's time. Man. Yeah. It's time to move on from Granite Xhaka now because that's it. It's broken. I have to admire this guy's comeback because to me, it didn't start with this season. It started with last season. Yeah. Now, at the start of last season, if you remember right, 
he didn't get off to a great start again because he got that sending off at City. And I remember being at that game and standing there and thinking, yo, why did you do that? Why so rash? Because that's the other thing yeah. that, you know, a lot of fans used to get upset with him. You know what I mean? He, he, he has these little moments where he just fly off the handle. <clears throat> but I have to say, after that sending off, when he came back, he was excellent for Arsenal. Yeah. And I remember I was interviewing lots of fans after games, right? And they talk about this player and that player. And I'd say, well, what about Granite? I thought he had a great game today. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. I mean, nobody, people still weren't taking to him. There was a lot of people, they weren't giving him his flowers for last season. And I remember even towards the end of the season, I, I made a couple of comments where I was saying, for me, you know what? For me, one of the best players this season, you know, if you take Saka out of it. He's up there, wasn't he? Granite Xhaka, he's been consistently good all season. People are like, what? I can't know. Listen, take the biasness out yeah. of it for a minute. Be real. This guy's been playing good this season. Take the, the red card. Take that out. He's been playing well. He's yeah. been our most good. Every game, and, and not only what I admired about him last season as well, is that a lot of times he was called to go into other positions. Go and play left back. Go and do this. That's when I started to see the worth of him because I'm like, this guy's a proper, proper team player. Yeah. Then I'll give you the next thing now that I feel helped Granite Xhaka even before we get to that Brentford game. Is that all or nothing documentary? Yeah, I was just about to mention that. I the, think it done him the power of good. Yeah, because you've got to see a side of him that maybe a lot of fans don't see. Yeah. Which is, he's a leader. Yeah. I, I, and a I, nice guy. Yeah, and I remember when when he um, when he got the captaincy and I spoke to somebody at Arsenal, and I said, oh, Granit Jack, the captain. He's always getting sent off. He's always getting rash and that. And I got, the guy said to me, Robbie, man, listen, that guy, he's the leader. He's a natural leader. He's so professional. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's like, he goes, he's that sort of player. It's like having a manager on the pitch. I was going, serious? I go, granted jacket. He goes, yeah, I'm telling you. And apparently when Arteta was there, he used to be like that as well. Because I, I also remember asking that question when Arteta got the captaincy. Mm. And, and somebody saying to me at that time that, you know, that's why he's the captain. He's like the natural leader. We've seen that come through yeah. into his management. So Arteta keeping him, he obviously saw that in him. And he obviously saw that the fact that he's going to be able to translate that onto the pitch. And that all or nothing documentary, when you watched him in that, I think a lot of people started to warm to him. Yeah. They started to say, they started to, say to themselves, you know what? Actually, this guy... Number one, he looks like he loves the club. And I like his rapport with the players. And you can see that actually, maybe I need to give a little rethink. Let me give a little rethink on this guy. And then this season, oh, it's been he so has sad, been amazing. Also, I think the thing that again, that has really caused the transformation is the change of position. Yeah. He's like a different player playing as that sort of, Box to box player. We've got to give Arteta a lot of credit for that. Cause over the years, I've always been like, "What is Granite Xhaka's position? Yeah. He's not a defensive midfielder. He's not that deep lying. What is he? He used to get caught out so many times. I think when he played as a DM, if he got yeah. turned and that, he ain't really got the pace to. But now, as that sort of dynamic, he's got the engine, hasn't he? He's got an engine on him. He's run more than any Arsenal yeah, player this season. Yeah. I think when you when you look to the back, finishes, Lee on his right foot. Uh, boom, I thought the guy only had one foot. Yeah, he's been, you know, well, that just shows you what confidence does, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, now, you know, you go, you said some really good things there. Like, you know, it ain't very nice when you know the fans don't like you. How, much, how bad, mate? Yeah. You know what I mean, that must be like, you know what I mean, that you're not liked. Do you know what I mean? Like within like your own. Yeah, fan yeah. Base. Other players, the songs. You know what I mean? Like, you know. If, yeah, that must be horrendous, you know what I mean? For, so, so to go for that, I remember that 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 sending off at Man City went boom, boom, boom. Three games after that, his first game back was Tottenham. I remember being in the pubs and all that. They, they better not bring that granite. He better not bring that <laughs> granite Shaka back into the team and all that. Like, well, he did, and he was man of the match. And if you don't remember, yeah. he got injured at the end and it was out then for a few months. Yeah. And we missed him. Come back, and then from then on, he was sensational. But I'm with you on that. That documentary done it. That. Where I'd met him, and I'm like, and you could think, oh, what a nice guy, you know what I mean? Like proper, proper bloke. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, like, you know what I mean? Like he was he, no, engaging. I met him. Yeah, it's you, the same when I met him. Same when I met him. Yeah. So then people like have seen what he's actually like, and you think, do you know what? He ain't as bad. He ain't a villain. He's not the villain of the. Because place. I think, I think like 
there was another time when he gave an interview where um, he said, they were sort of asking him and saying, yeah, yeah bro, what, 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 you keep getting sent off and yellow cards and and he's like, that's how I am, man. I am that, that you know, that's me. I mean, I'm a couple, and I think a lot of people at that time were saying, well, he's an arrogant guy, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why are you, and I was thinking, he's not really, when I've seen him, when I met him, he didn't seem that Yeah, way. I think he was always, he had that, so he had I've, his back up with it and all the, uh, yeah, with the yeah, Arsenal yeah, fans. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? If you be honest, it, uh, you know, uh, if you sat down with him on the quiet, you know, Arsenal fans, I hate them, like, you know what I mean? Because they weren't giving him the thing. Yeah. But he's, he he has changed as well from that from that thing. And I think, like, he is, someone have, may have in the club have said, look, you know, enhance the fans now. Get on their side and, and they, they they will back you. Despite anything, that is what is wonderful about football fans. They're so fickle. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, <laughs> that they will forgive. And, they, uh, uh, you know, they might not forget, but they will forgive. And, like, you know, it, it's definitely happened with him, like, you know, and and... The, the, the transformation you've got to give Mikel Arteta loads of credit for that as well but I look back on the on, on the sending off at, um, at Liverpool as well he was in that document they yeah, yeah. all bantered about it like yeah. tangle of legs when I look back at it now like, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. like there's nothing really wrong with it like you know and, uh, yeah what he said but he, he, he does say anything like oh look me again I'll take the blame for it yeah, like, but thank all, you but, lads but he did yeah. turn around and say thank you lads you know afterwards for getting me out of the hole yeah. I think that was a good thing, you know what I mean? So, but he also said, he goes, uh, which actually, when you looked at it, he goes, yeah, he goes, he goes, blame me. He goes, you all left me down there just on my own. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Because remember yeah, that, yeah. what he did, didn't he? He, he said, it was me on my own. Why was I left on my own? Like, yeah. And, and, and you could see that there was a, something in that. And I, I think the documentary, I, I, I still say this now, I've not seen the last episode because I know what happened, but the ones up to that, I, you, you couldn't help but like Granite Shanker. You actually, you know, mm. if you had a, a, a bad feeling or, or like on the fence say with Mikel Arteta that turned you to, to, to go with him because you see what mm. he was doing and all that like you know so I, I think that, that that documentary by the way was beneficial for for a lot of things and I think it was very very beneficial for Granit Xhaka Granit Xhaka could walk into any pub now around Arsenal and he wouldn't have to buy a drink oh well, they'd be, they'd be they'd loving mob him and they'd be singing his name and he, he'd be drunk Granite Xhaka, yes. a couple of years ago, could not walk into a no. pub in Arsenal because, well, actually, they wouldn't to his face. You know what fans are like? No, no, but, but there would be, you know, I, 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 I think his turnaround is 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 a wonderful thing. In for, it's, it's been beautiful to see. It's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed it, and I, and I've really enjoyed seeing him, like you said, his rapport with the fans, fans singing his name his reaction to it. And now we are starting to see a different player. Look look at his leadership qualities. Yeah. Look at when we score a goal. Who's the first person to pull everyone into yeah. the uh, and say, guys, concentrate. Well, uh, and, that, and that's a great thing. And also I think that he's got to be given credit for is that there was that moment at Brentford. What did he do? He went on Instagram and said, oh, thank you, fans. He's engaging yeah. with the fans yeah. now. Like, you know what I mean? He's realised that maybe, <clears throat> I think he's not matured and whatever, but I think he realised that he's made mistakes. Yeah. And now he's rectifying them and the fans are saying the same. So, you know, I, I, it's, it's great. He's on he's on there now saying that, um, we, you know, like even this game didn't get what we will we'll be working on. You think, mm. yes, Granite, you know what I mean? Like, and I think it's just a, comp he, somebody has had a word with him. You know what I mean? Like, and said to him, look, get them fans on your side and you'll, you'll have a great time. Maybe his that. dad. Maybe his dad. Maybe, maybe his dad. Oh, he's like, you know his ball geezer. He's yeah, always, yeah, yeah, he's you know always I mean? slagging you off. <laughs> if you can get him back on side, you know I mean, you can get anyone back Listen, on side. Listen, I was a critic. I'll, 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 I'll go back. Like, all my mates turn around and say, are you... Because I've I, I started defending yeah. quite a lot, but they go, ah, you're only yeah, defending because you're, you're sat in it. You, you sold out. You're sat next because you're sitting next to him. But what I actually did see was a different person to what I'd seen before I met him. And and that changed my it did change my yeah. mind a little bit because just goes he was to show like, you know I'm always saying guy. I always say like sometimes when I've got to speak to football clubs or anybody I'll say listen let your players be you know don't hide them away from the fans yeah let fans know what they are know what they're like because sometimes that can change fans' opinions and we've seen you know what I I was looking into it the other day as well I was like there's a couple of players right that have turned careers around right from being figures that people are looking and think this guy get him out he's no good or whatever I think of Jordan Henderson when he first went to well, yeah, when he went to Liverpool fantastic um, fantastic point yeah. yeah when he first went to Liverpool he was having a tough time a lot of Liverpool fans this guy's rubbish this guy's crap get him he's a captain now yeah 
right? He's the he's he's the leader of the. You know, I know they ain't having a great season this year, but look at all the things he's won. Yeah, with Liverpool and what he's done. <clears throat> uh, uh, Joe Linton at Newcastle. Yeah, another one. Oh, yeah. Mikey, that's another one, right? And he's engaged with the fans, isn't he? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Like, Joe, uh, Joe well, Linton. I heard. A, I heard a Newcastle fan on the radio, like just eulogising about mm. him. That guy when he first came in, yeah, when he's playing as a striker. You know, um, everybody was slagging him off. He's crap. Get him out. He's not a Brazilian. Well, now he's one of their most important players. Yeah. And again, a change of position, Lee. Yeah. Maybe sometimes it's, that's what he. You know, and again, that's the, that's down to the manager. Isn't yeah, it? it's yeah. the manager saying, right, you know what, Joe, I'm going to move you into a different position. It's like they, I think he's like a box and box midfielder. Yeah, right? yeah. And he's been a revelation at Newcastle. It's the same with Xhaka. That change of position. Yeah, that, I always has, think it, has made a huge because now I feel where he's playing now is where cause I was just seeing him play for Switzerland. I go, yeah. Every time I see this guy play for Switzerland, he's good. Yeah. That comes when he comes back to us. But I think when he was playing for Switzerland, he plays where he plays now for Arsenal. Yeah, uh, and it, it's showing. And listen, Arsenal have had like a little bit of history with players like that over the years. You know what I mean? Like, Bowie. Remember Bowie? Bowie got like, you know. Remember that time where he yeah, got. Uh, that, that, was yeah. that was terrible. I yeah. remember being at that game. That was awful. And that was awful. That was awful. And he bounced back from that. Yeah, he bounced back from that. One, one of the best players that's ever played for Arsenal, we've had him in the studio, it was Paul Davis. But when Davis. he first when he first got yeah. he was a bit of a scapegoat because he yeah. looked that they looked at him as a replacement for Liam Brady which was like so yeah. unfair yeah but he, he turned it around stuck with it and become a firm favourite with the Arsenal yeah. fans you know what I mean so it can be done you yeah. know what I mean like but you know it, it probably makes you a better player like I've, I think it's not an easy thing it, it takes a lot done. of um it takes a lot of mental toughness because remember even what at one time Granite Xhaka said he had to turn off his socials and things yeah. like that because of, he was saying that even his wife and that was getting abuse. Mm. No, right. so it's a, it's, a, um, it's a great story, man. And, and, and long mate continue. Yeah, and yeah. It's at the moment, this guy is doing, is doing great things for the club. Um, hopefully he can do great things at the weekend. The Nottingham Forest game, um, are you looking on that and saying to yourself, you're quite confident in that game? I mean, listen, um, it's, a little bit tougher than we thought it was going to be yeah, last so week after they got that result against um, Liverpool. Their confidence is going to be up now, but... Listen, there would be a little bit of pressure going on to us after Southampton, but um, I'm, I'm confident that we can get the job done. I don't think it's going to be a, a walkover, as, as you say, 3-0, but I mm. think that we've got to get through. I just think that I don't care if we win it 1-0, scrap you 2-1, we've got to get the three points for this one because mm. it's you know we've then got two... Tough away games, you know. Again, like uh, away games is Chelsea, Chelsea and Southampton. Uh, sorry, Chelsea and, and Wolves. Wolves. Not, you know, no game away from home is easy. No. Like, you, you know, know I'm mean? looking at, you know, I'm looking at, and I'm thinking we could win those two away games as well. I think we're good enough. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, Wolves are struggling a bit. Chelsea weren't great against United. Not that they, you know, they always play like that. But I, I'm like, the way we're playing, we're we're we've been playing in the Premier League. We've been playing some great stuff, and I, I'm com I'm confident. I I I think we'll win that. I'm going three 0 Well, what what Saturday like you know, Sunday? Sunday. So I'm, I'm going, going, going to go two two nil. Two but nil. I I think that um you know we need to win the game. I'd be a little bit of pressure. I I I honestly think for this it's pressure because the it's first game. expectation to win. Yeah, I think the first time there's going to be a little bit of nervousness going into the game. At, at, um, at the Emirates and I mean that because of on the back of not a great second half performance at Leeds not a great performance against not, I wouldn't say performance against First PSV half was good. yeah PSV was a good performance at home then this one here was first half by the way we were sensational like, mm. second half it weren't so there's a little bit of a worry you know of we getting jaded we're getting tired and all that so I think we need to to go in there I, I think it'd be a nervy game Okay, but you're going 2 0. I'm going to go 2 0. 2 0, I'm going 3 0. Don't forget, um, as we said, the pick 10, it all, it, it all hangs on this weekend. Yes, it does. So we decide who's taking who to dinner. Oh. Right? He's 2 1 up at the moment. Um, it was a draw last and, week. And by the way, you change the rules a little bit. Like, yeah, oh, oh, we'll change the rules. Well, like, you know, I, mean, no, I, I, I thought so, well, I'm safe. And then you say, oh, we're, we're, we use the old uh, special as a, 
I was just trying Didn't you right agree now. to it? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> what were you moaning about for? Well, I mean, right, I, so I, you, you I mean, st- you, you said you're in the driving seat. Oh, I am in the driving at seat. At the moment, right. because if I, I mean, lose... I'm not a man, you know, it's a bloody winter, a bloody <laughs> meal, like, you know what I mean? There you go. Like, but don't yeah. forget, the, the, the pick 10 this week is £10,000 on a Saturday, um, £5,000 on a Sunday pick 10. And, of course, there's a Nottingham Forest versus Arsenal special, another five grand on that. And just by entering a chance to win an iPhone 14, right? Brand new iPhone 14 that's been rolled over from last week. You can win that. All you got to do, click the link in the description or download AFTV plus our app and you can enter the AFTV pick 10 and a chance to win up to 20,000 pounds in prizes in that pot this weekend. Um, Lee, thank you very much, mate. Been a pleasure. Um, been an absolute pleasure. Thank you to you guys. Don't forget to subscribe here to AFTV um, for the very best of our podcast. You can download it as well on all the normal formats and we'll be back next week. The Invincible Podcast. Myself, Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.